So imagine we have the surface in 3 space z equals 24 minus x squared minus 3y squared, and we want to find the volume under this surface over the particular region where x is between 0 and 3 and y is between 0 and 2, where this exact chunk of material um, looks something like this. So we're going to calculate this exactly eventually, but first let's just try and get it in the ballpark with a Riemann prism estimate. So, but before we even go into that, let's talk about um, what makes this problem hard. So if this were a flat plane, um, that's actually going to be a pretty easy problem. You wouldn't really need calculus, right? You could just, um, it would have a certain height, a certain width, a certain length, and you just you know multiply those together, you get a volume. That, that'd be easy. Or you maybe use some simple geometry to figure it out if it wasn't um, a straight um, flat plane. Um, but this is, gets harder because this is not flat. This is a curved surface. That makes this pretty difficult. And if you recall back, that was the same difficulty we had in Calc 2. Finding the area under a flat line, uh, that's pretty simple. That's just you know just rectangular basic geometry, but when that line was curved and it got complicated, and that's why we, we needed to take a difficult problem and we needed to break it up into a bunch of um, little easier problems. In Calc 2, it was breaking it up into a bunch of little um, rectangles because those are easy to find. And it turns out, um, as sort of an aside, this is, um, this is a very common um, technique used in mathematics to take a difficult problem and break it up into a bunch of smaller ones. But this is also problem, um, a sort of a technique I'm sure you've used a lot in your life and it's really um, common in other fields as well. To take sort of a bizarre example, take um, David Blaine, maybe you've heard of him, a magician. He does some crazy endurance stuff and one time he stayed inside a block of ice for 63 hours straight. And his mental approach to that was to use something called chunking. So he didn't just look at, okay, I'm getting through 63 hours. Here we go. He looked at it as sort of one or two hours at a time. He was like, get through this one. Okay, got through that. Now I'm going to look at it one or two hours later. He just, he, he, he chunked it. He took, look, took one little, um, ate the elephant one little bite at a time, if you will. And that's something that um, you can apply to all, all sorts of um, problems that you face. Um, for example, uh, maybe you're... Calc 3 homework. Maybe that's uh, maybe it's, maybe you want to chunk that. Hopefully you don't suffer through that as much as David Blaine did while he was sleep deprived because he couldn't he couldn't um, lean against the ice otherwise he'd get frostbite. So he started hallucinating horribly. Hopefully your um, Calc 3 homework's not that bad, but you could sort of look at it as chunking, you know, one little bit at a time, one little one little one problem at a time, and um, and you get through it like that. So let's um, let's get through this problem one piece at a time, we'll look at one one rectangular solid at a time. And we're gonna these are these little chunk problems are gonna be easy because we know how to find the volume if we just know the length, height, and width. So we're gonna do an approximation here and we're gonna cut it up into six rectangular columns and, as shown here. And our volume is just gonna be the sum of each of these. And you might notice first of all that our volume looks like it's gonna be an underestimate. Um, because the volumes, added volumes of all these columns will be a little bit less than the actual surface, but that's okay. It's going to give us an approximation, at least it'll get, it will get us in the ballpark. So um, our total volume is going to be the volume of each of these rectangular prisms. And each of these prisms is going to have a length of 1 in the x direction and a length of 1 in the y direction because we conveniently cut it up like that. And in order to find the volume of each of these prisms, we're going to need one more item of information. That's going to be the height of each of these. And there's a bit of flexibility in where we want to find the height because these are sections. We can find it anywhere. And let's just go ahead and find that height at sort of the this uh, lower right part. And another thing that we can do here is since we know that length and the width are the same for all of them, we can sort of pull that out and multiply the length and the width by all these heights as we add the heights together. So our total volume is going to be our length times our width times the height of each of these rectangular columns. So let's find the height of our first column at this point 1, 1. We'll find the, that height is going to be 20. We'll find the next height at the point 2, 1, which is going to be 17. At the point 3, 1, it's going to be 12. At the point 3, 2, it'll be 3. At the point 2, 2, it'll be 8. And at the point 1, 2, it'll be 11. So now we have really all the information we need. We know the length, width, and height of all of these rectangular prisms. 
So our total volume is going to be our delta x times our delta y times our function evaluated at each of these points. And we already found that function, that height, and so we can just go ahead and plug these in. So our delta x, if you recall, was just 1. Our delta y was 1. Our function evaluated at x equals 1 and y equals 1 was 20. Our function evaluated at x equals 2 and y equals 1 was 17, and et cetera. We just go ahead and plug all those in. We add up those heights. We multiply it by the width and length, and we end up with approximately 71, which um, Calcplot conveniently shows us down here. So that's it. That's our Riemann sum to get an estimate of the volume under the surface over this particular region. And I guess it's in the ballpark, but suppose we wanted to get a better approximation. What could we do? So if you recall back to Calc 2, there's a couple ways you could do that. One of those is using a midpoint instead. You see if we use the midpoint here, it wouldn't be a clear underestimate. There'd be some under, some over, and that, that's going to get us a little bit better of an approximation. And of course, if we really wanted to get a better one, we could just ratchet up that number of rectangular prisms we're dividing this into. That's going to get pretty hard to do by hand, but Calcplot 3D is actually doing that for us. And you see if we ratchet that up, we get something around 102. And we'll see in the next video what happens if we ratchet that number of prisms up infinitely. And that's going to give us our formal definition of our integral for um, three space. So um, stay tuned and we'll discuss that more in detail in the next video.